All right, so we've got this story, right? Retired pharmacist, hidden talisman, whispers of a celestial realm. Kind of reminds me of those old adventure flicks, but with like a philosophical twist, you know. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's really interesting how they take this familiar, you know, adventure story and use it to explore some pretty deep concepts. I mean, you've got mm -hmm. ancient wisdom, spiritual seeking, even a touch of that cosmic mystery. And it's all centered around this this ordinary guy, Marty. Totally. And Marty, he doesn't exactly scream mystic or guru, does he? I mean, he's a retired pharmacist, a man of science, of reason, suddenly thrust on this quest for truth. Exactly. And I think that's what makes his journey so relatable. Right. Like, he starts out skeptical, questioning everything, just like a lot of us would, I think. <laughs> Surrounded by all these books, trying to find answers in science, philosophy, religion. But it's not until he stumbles upon that hidden talisman that things really start to change for him. It's like he needed that that push, you know, to step outside his comfort zone and into something beyond his everyday life. And that's where this whole idea of the celestial faith comes in, which, by the way, isn't your typical religion, is it? Not at all. The story describes it more like a, like a cosmic operating system, I guess you could say, <laughs> a set of universal principles governing existence, touching upon ideas like karma, justice, free will, love, compassion, forgiveness, Okay, so those concepts themselves aren't new, right? I mean, they've been around for ages across so many different spiritual traditions. What makes the celestial faith unique in its approach? It's how they weave these principles into a larger cosmic tapestry, emphasizing this interconnectedness of everything. Like every action, every thought sends ripples throughout the universe. So it's not just about individual enlightenment then, it's about how our choices, all of them, impact the collective on a, well, a cosmic scale. Yeah. What really stood out to you about this concept of interconnectedness? They have a really unique perspective on Godai. Okay, how so? It's actually an acronym for Grand Organized Designers. Hold on, Grand Organized Designers. Are you saying Gaudi is like some kind of cosmic design team? Well, yeah, in essence, the story suggests that Gaudi is this this collective consciousness formed by interconnected souls all working in harmony, like a, a, a network of minds all linked together, contributing to this larger intelligence that shapes the universe. Wow. So we're not just pawns in some predetermined game then. We're active participants, co-creators, mm -hmm. shaping the very fabric of reality. That's a pretty empowering thought. It really makes you question those traditional ideas of divinity and free will, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. What's your take on this, this concept of a collective God D? It's a lot to take in for sure, but I can see how it ties into that idea of interconnectedness and the ripple effect of our actions. If we're all part of this larger consciousness, our choices, our thoughts, they all feed into that grand scheme of things. But that brings up a question. If we're all part of this grand cosmic design, why don't we remember any of it? Ah, that's where the veil of forgetfulness comes in. Right. The cosmic amnesia that keeps us from remembering our past lives and where we came from. But why the need for a veil in the first place? Well, the narrative suggests it serves a purpose. Think mm. about it. If you carried the weight of all your past experiences, every triumph and every failure into each new lifetime, it'd be a bit much, wouldn't it? That's putting it mildly. It'd be like trying to run a marathon with like a backpack full of rocks. You might make some progress, but... Exactly. So this veil of forgetfulness, it allows us to fully immerse ourselves in each new life, to approach each experience with fresh eyes. You know, it lets us learn and grow without being bogged down by the past. Like hitting the reset button, wiping the slate clean so we can start fresh. What are your thoughts on that? Is it better to remember or is there wisdom in this this cosmic forgetting? It's a question that people have been pondering for centuries, right? Like, does remembering actually hold us back mm -hmm. or does it give us, you know, a roadmap for growth? This celestial faith seems to think forgetting is better, allows for a more, I don't know, more immersive human experience yep. without all the baggage. Embracing the mystery, the unknown, not getting hung up on the what ifs of past lives. Exactly. And it plays into a larger theme, this idea that every experience, good or bad, is meant to help our soul evolve. They don't shy away from the darker stuff either, even introducing this negative force. Right. It's not all like rainbows and harps in this cosmic tapestry, is it? There's a darkness there, too, challenging us. So how does the celestial faith square that, this negative force, with this whole emphasis on love and compassion? It seems a bit contradictory. It's interesting. They suggest this negative force isn't actually evil, more like an opposing energy, mm -hmm. necessary even. Think of it like yin and yang, you know? Opposites, but interconnected, interdependent. Okay. So they see this negative force as like 
the catalyst for growth. Mm. It's by going through the tough stuff, overcoming obstacles that we figure out our strength, resilience, compassion, all of that. So it's not about like actively seeking out suffering or anything like that, right? More about recognizing that even when things are bad, there's potential for learning, for growth. Exactly. The narrative says this negative force is woven into the fabric of, as they call it, the mortal realm. It's there to help us evolve spiritually. And by overcoming these challenges, we shed our ego, attachments, illusions, and get closer to enlightenment. It's interesting how Marty's journey kind of embodies all this. He goes from skeptic to, well, having these intense spiritual experiences, meeting celestial beings, learning about the celestial plan. But it's not easy for him, is it? Not at all. He doubts, he's afraid, mm -hmm. even tempted to just write the whole thing off as, you know, a hallucination. He deals with people close to him, not getting it making fun of them even. Mm. Did that internal struggle resonate with you? Absolutely. Trying to fit these big spiritual experiences into your everyday life, it's tough. It's one thing to have this profound realization, some mystical thing happen, but then you have to go to work, manage relationships, all that mundane stuff. Right, and they don't pretend it's simple. Yeah. Marty doesn't become some like enlightened guru on a mountaintop, instantly wise. He's still figuring it out as he goes, trying to make sense of it all. Which I think makes him more relatable. Not some perfect being, just a guy trying his best with what he's learned. And speaking of what he's learned, it's interesting how he goes about sharing this new understanding. He's not exactly preaching on street corners, is he? No, much more subtle. Mm -hmm. he creates a space in his home, a sanctuary, where he can explore these concepts, connect with the celestial realm. And he invites others in, not to convert them or anything, but just to have an open conversation. Right. Right, planting seeds, letting them grow, and he designs this sanctuary with specific elements that are supposed to help people heal, connect spiritually, right? Yeah, like they talk about the use of certain colors, lights, even these solfeggio frequencies. Those always grab my attention. Sounds like something out of sci-fi. What are they exactly, these frequencies? Why are they important to the celestial faith? They describe them as sound frequencies with healing, transformative properties. The idea is they resonate with the universe's vibrations, creating harmony in your body and mind. Like fine-tuning yourself to the cosmos. That's pretty wild. Do they get into specifics about these frequencies? They do, yeah. 396 hertz, 417 hertz, 528 hertz, things like that. Each one's connected to different things like releasing fear, finding clarity, stronger intuition, all kinds of stuff. Fascinating. A sonic toolkit for spiritual growth? I'm going to have to look into those. Me too. That's what I like about this story. It throws out these cool ideas, these tools, and lets you run with them. No blind faith required, just encourages you to find your own way. Bridging the gap between the spiritual and the everyday, like we can actually apply these ancient practices today. Speaking of which, Marty's sanctuary sounds amazing. How do they describe it? Anything we can learn from how we put it together? It's not about grand gestures, more about intention. Making a space that feels calm, where you can reflect and connect. They mention soft lighting, comfy cushions, natural elements. He's got crystals, plants, even a small fountain in there, all to create a sense of peace. Creating a sacred space, even if it's just a corner of your room or a quiet spot in the garden. Exactly. And it's in this space that he uses those solfeggio frequencies we talked about, along with meditation, visualization, all to connect to the celestial realm and understand the celestial plan better. Like he's built a bridge between the physical and spiritual. It makes you wonder, what would our own sanctuaries look like? What would we put in there? What would we do to find that peace, that inner knowing? That's worth thinking about. What clicks for one person might not for another. It's about finding what works for you, what helps you tap into that connection. Yeah, it's about finding that, that personal connection, creating a space that reflects your own journey. Right, and once you have that space, that's when you can really start exploring some of the deeper ideas in the celestial faith, like this celestial plan. It's funny, they keep mentioning this plan, this like cosmic blueprint, but they never actually spell it out, do they? It's like we get these little pieces, but not the whole picture. It's like they're saying it's too big, too much for us to grasp with our limited human understanding. Like explaining the internet to, I don't know, a caveman. Exactly. But they do give us some clues, like they emphasize that we're not here to just chase money, power, that kind of stuff. It's about evolving, growing, learning from what we go through, and mm -hmm. contributing to something bigger. It's about the journey, not the destination. Right. Each life is like a chapter in this grand evolution of our soul, a chance to learn new things, face new challenges, understand ourselves and the universe better. And that journey, it's not a solo trip, is it? They make a big deal out of how connected everything is, how we're all part of this web. 
Yeah, this idea of soul groups is really central to the celestial faith. Imagine a group of souls linked together by what they've been through, sharing a common goal, and they travel together through lifetime after lifetime. So like a cosmic support system, a group that always has your back, even when you mess up, lose your way. That's a nice way to put it. The narrative suggests your soul group is vital to your spiritual progress. They guide you, they're there for you, even give you a nudge in the right direction when you need it. Makes you think if we keep coming back with the same souls, our actions have much bigger consequences, right? Not just in this life, but across multiple lives. Absolutely. The choices you make, the energy you put out there, it all affects your journey, but also your soul group's journey. Adds a whole new layer to karma, doesn't it? It's not just you, it's the whole group's karma, these experiences that shape all of you. It's a lot to wrap your head around, that's for sure. Makes you think twice about your choices. Imagine knowing you'd be reincarnating with the same people over and over. Wow. Would you treat them differently? Handle disagreements differently? I mean, would it make you want to create a better world for all of you? It really makes you think about those connections. They run a lot deeper than just this one life. Exactly. And that circles back to the celestial plan. We might not know all the details, but they seem to say that by focusing on love, compassion, forgiveness, that connection between us... Hmm. That's how we start to line up with it. So it's not about following rules in some book, but about living those principles in everything you do, in who you are, recognizing that spark of, I guess you could say, divinity in yourself, in everyone. Well said. And that's what makes this whole thing so interesting. No easy answers, no set path. It's an invitation to explore, to question, to find your own truth. To awaken to what we can be, to step into that power we have, to shape our reality. And even though the journey can be unpredictable, we're not totally alone, right? We've got our soul group, this guidance from the celestial realm, even the wisdom of these ancient traditions, all pointing us in the right direction. This story reminds us that there's so much out there, so much we don't know. It's vast and mysterious and full of amazing things. It's on us to approach it with curiosity, with open minds, and most importantly, with open hearts. Beautifully put. And on that note, we'll let you continue exploring this narrative on your own. Hopefully it's piqued your interest, challenged how you think about things, maybe even inspired you to see the world in a new light. Keep searching, keep asking questions, keep listening to that little voice inside. Until next time.